there, my name's Gareth and I'm a technical consultant here at Man and Machine. And today I'm going to look at ISO 19650 workflows and naming containers, both in Autodesk Construction Cloud's Autodesk Docs and BIM 360 Docs. Firstly, I'm going to start off with the CD workflows. In ISO 19650 Part 1, it talks about having information container states such as work in progress, shared and published areas. We're going to demonstrate this in the product. Also, I'm going to talk to you about the naming containers as there is now a new feature in both Autodesk Docs and BIM 360. One thing we need to consider is the National Annex was updated in February 2021, showing as identified on the screen here as National Annex update. Some of the fields naming has changed. You may want to set your BIM 360 or your Autodesk Docs up to suit the initial update or the previous release. Also I want to consider is the information container metadata such as status codes, revision and classification. Now in the UK we use Uniclass so this is what we'll be specifying. Okay let's take a look. So here you go on screen on the right hand side we have BIM 360 Docs and on the left we have Autodesk Docs. So just to go over the, the difference between the two. Now I've set two projects up as you can see here. So in BIM 360 Docs you'll see we have the plans area but in Autodesk Docs we have the, all the field area. Now I've set them up with the same sort of folder structure. And then as you see on the left hand side in Autodesk Docs we have project files which is exactly the same as the project files in BIM 360. So just to see um, the difference between the two, if we look at the project files area, I've set them up slightly differently just for your information purposes. Now again, um, your interpretation in regards to your common data environment setup will vary from project to project, but here's just two examples. So first of all, you can see I've got discipline specific organization um, set up by folder. So these will be the work in progress areas for these organizations. I've got a project shared area, so when we share the information, it's it's placed into there. Um, now, what I'm going to do is use the for the field for the published area, but you can use whatever you want. But then on the BIM 360 side, I've done it slightly different. I've got a published area, I've got a shared area, and I've got a work in progress with some folders for each discipline. So again, it depends on how you work. So obviously, we need to set in the certain permissions for for allowing people to go in there and access that information. So to set up the, um, the naming conventions in Autodesk Docs, we go to the settings tab here. So now, just for your information, if I just populate this uh, window out, I'm in the files area in Docs, as you'll see here. It works slightly differently to BIM 360, but fundamentally the, the tools are the same. If I go to the settings here, you'll see I've got attributes, naming, standards, and advanced settings. And if I click any of these, it opens up the window and you can see here, it goes into the advanced settings, there's the naming and there's the attributes. So, it'll go on. so I can now go and do apply. And before I do that, I'm just going to switch over to the docs. Slightly differently, we need to go up to our module selector, go into project admin. And then from here, we can go into the settings and do that. And you'll see we've got attributes, we've got naming standards and so forth. And you can see it's very similar as we set this up. So what we can do, um, if we go in here and hit view and apply, um, actually quickly before I do that, you can see here, once you've named applied, it cannot be removed from the project. So just bear that in mind. So you go in here, you can see it's got the default settings. Now, as I mentioned before, this is to suit the um, initial release of the standard, not the update, but you can go in and rename them appropriately anyway, so it doesn't really matter. Let's hit apply, and let's do the same in our BIM 360 as well. And you can see here, again, can you see it's just slightly differently. I've got a little tick box this time, just, just to say, look, I accept that it won't be able to be removed, and it's there. So click apply, and it'll go in, and then you'll see the very similar window. Again, it, it's it's the same. So you can see the layout's slightly different, but it's still the same sort of principle. I'm going to set up the attributes. So I'm going to customize, do the same on the other side. So I'm going to do this in tandem. You'll see we'll do both at the same time. We've got the specific headings at the top. Again, you can see we hover over the same feature. We can add and remove, for example, if we need to, because um, you may want to customize this to suit the region you're in or the project you're on. Um, as you'll see, if we scroll down, we've got settings. Um, here we've also got the relative attributes which I'm going to go through a bit later on again this just reference to these ISO standard and you'll see we've got revisions classifications as well okay so we can go in and set those up but let's start off let's just do it um, 
with the naming convention. Now what I'm going to do, rather than set both up at the same time, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go into Docs on the left hand side for the Autodesk one, set that up, and then I'll do the BIM 360 docs in the background and then you'll see it done afterwards. But it's in principle exactly the same way. Like I say, as we've got project, uh, we can change the attribute naming, which is great. Um, what I would suggest, um, my personal preference here, is put in a description. We could say this is the project identifier. Um, so we'd make sure that people just know what it, it actually is. It's identifier. So it just pops up as a, a sort of a description for what it is. In here, I'm going to use it as alpha, alphanumeric, but I could do it as text or a number. And you'll see here we've got the range, but we can set not required or fixed number. So we're saying it has to be between two and six. So I'm going to have the, the letters in. So for example, MAM. So this will be you know, man and machine. And then the other organizations as part of this, however they could be. So you'll see I've added a couple of names in for the originator <clears throat> and also put a short description in so people know exactly what it um, is and what you should be completing. Let's click save. And again, I'm just going to go along and set up all these uh, specifically so you'll be able to see them all done. OK, in Blue Peter fashion, I've just completed all the fields. They are set up default within the system when you first go in anyway. But for example, um, if you are implying to a layering system from the client, you may want to go in here and, and add in their specific codes or relevant codes associated to those. Um, but yeah, going through, simply setting these up so you can utilize them. So yeah, if we move down here under the settings, we've got the denominator between each piece of text. So you'll see on the right hand side at the top here, it's got the text showing as, as you would expect it to. But if we change this to, for example, to underscore or here to a point, you can do. Personally, hyphen's fine for me. Makes sense. Then if we move down to the attributes, um, and you'll see here we've got the initial stages. This matches what's in ISO 19650, the original. But now in the updated version of the Annex, you will see that it has been revised. Um, and then obviously we've got the revision. So um, we need to set up, you know, for example, is alphanumeric text number, given the revision length, how long that revision needs to be identified in the standard. And then we've got classification. Um, so with regards to classification, obviously in the UK, we work with uh, Uniclass 2015 as our classification table. And you'll see if you go into here, we have any class one we can select and you'll see in here we can um, get all the uniclass classification codes from this so you can uh, download the tables or look at the uh, table through here by putting in a search okay so now we set it up we need to save and apply this to the project so you'll see if i do save and apply it's now saving it to the project so we can actually utilize this okay so let's now add the enforcement settings onto the folders we simply do it by clicking on the select folder gives us a drop down list we can then go in and select the specific folders we wish to apply it to which is the shared area we could apply it to the work in progress areas um, but I'm going to leave it for just this moment and then we'll come back to that so uh, what I want to do is obviously show you the the project shared area and obviously the working area. then we're going to get some workflows to you know um, transpose that information into the locations it needs to so I'm going to click select and now that will be applied to that folder itself. So if I go into the actual files area, I can just click here. And what you'll notice, wherever it's actually assigned, i.e. here, you can see it's now got the enforcement on there. And you'll see all these of those down. So if I went, for example, back into my, um, my settings and go into here, I can always go in and add, for example, this location as well and it will now include the same settings for that one okay so if we upload anything we need to make sure it complies so let's try something let's upload a document i've got a folder here um, with some files in i'm going to upload these to project document and you'll see all the subfolders are included as part of this so what i'm going to do is i'm going to go into this folder so we go in drag both files in so first thing is obviously looking at is the information um, it's taken the file name 
So in this case, that's an incorrect file name. Um, this one, which if I open the folder again, you'll see here, it's actually got the specific data. So, you know, if I take that information, I can start populating. I can go in and specifically select that. So in this case, um, that one, zero, zero. So you see if I type under classification, so you can go along, obviously fill out the relevant data, go into classification. If I start to write in execution, as in execution plan, we can go in here. So you can see we've got the execution plan, pre-appointment, so for example, we select that one. If I do upload to folder and do continue, you'll see it'll take one file. It's published one file to the actual project and the other one is published to the holding area. So it's not quite the yet. So we go into here, you'll see, and again, it tells you that information. Just minimize that down, I'll close that down. There's the, uh, the file uploaded. And if we come across, you'll see the specific information is filled out. Now you can see the revision didn't fill out, but it doesn't matter. In this case, I'm going to populate that in a minute, but if we go in here, I can come in here and sort of shorter. Yeah, so it's filled out all that data. Again, we can go in and, and fill out that um, revision stuff. But if we go into the holding area, because it's highlighting here with the one, and then we can select that file and go in and, and update the information. Now, what I'm going to do in this case, because it's not got the right file name, I'm just going to hit the bin and delete that. Because what I want to be able to do in this case is put all files up into the cloud that have all the relevant file case. So this is probably what your, your document controls would be doing on the project. So I'm going to do two things here. First of all, I'm going to upload some files here to the architecture area. And you'll see, I'm just going to drag a couple in now, just drag and drop. And what you'll see, you can see the process is going through. So it's going to upload the files directly to this area. And you can see nothing is happening here. They've not going prompt that will set specific naming convention. It's just allowing me to upload the information. So those files, and that folded here are going to a folder which have not got the naming convention assigned. And again, if we go into the project shared area, I'm going to just basically pop in the same drawings. And you see this time, it's actually informing me that I need to fill out the data. It's taken some of the information from the actual file uploaded. So it's populated quite a lot of those. Again, I'm just going to status and classification. I'm just typing here drawing. So I'll go with technical drawing. And this is great the way you can just type in there and do a search and find the information you want. Simply, click on the upload button down here, it's going to go through the process and pop them in. So now that's, you know, it's gone through fine, all the information shared. So that's a simple task that we can complete. Now, one thing I want to look at now, and this is obviously something that will happen live in the project, is we'll need a workflow. So it may have an internal part of the project where someone may need to share files directly to somebody else in here to approve and then move the file or a copy of the file into the project shared area. So let's have a look at that. So let's look at putting the workflow in so we can have somebody internally do an approval and then copy the files across. So you'll see here, if I go to submit for review, I've got one setup already I can use. I'm gonna give it a short title, come down here, click submit, which I can't because it's grayed out. Now the reason why that is, now you'll notice I can't do that because here next to the files, it's got a little red a uh, circle with an eye in it, basically telling me that I cannot do this because the drawings do not conform to the naming standard. For me, this should be available. You should be able to do this, but as the process goes through, it goes into the naming standard so you can transfer the files across. Because I know the file has the right naming, but obviously it's not been named appropriately going into the uh, stocks area. So what I'm gonna have to do is cancel out of that. What I can do is I can go in here and I could copy the file to that area. And you can see this time it's given me the options to do so. So two files do not conform, it's now doing this. This is where I think that this should fit in in that instance. So if I just quickly go in and name them both. So it's added the revisions, I'm gonna do a copy. It's now gonna take a copy of the file and push it into the shared area, which you see notification at the top. So go to the shared area, you'll now see it's updating itself. Here's the two files. Basically the same file as before. There's all the information filled out, the revision. So now it's got a copy in there and you can see it's version two. Bear in mind a couple of other things as well. If I'm sharing this file from here to here by copy, the person has to have rights to see the information in this folder. So for example, if I go in and look at permissions, I'm an admin so I can do this, but if I was just, for example, the architect, I may not have rights to this folder. Now in this case, Richard does. It's a great feature. I think it works reasonably well. 
Um, personally, I would like the workflow part thrown in, but that's um, an idea for the future. So I've just switched into BIM 360, so you can see the same process. Um, I've set it up where all the files, or the folders should say, have the naming convention assigned to this. I'm just going to upload some files in here. You'll see if I just literally drag and drop these ones in here, go through the process again, because these need to be uploaded. And there you go, there's all the information filled out. Click upload, uploads the files directly into BIM 360. So the same process, going through applying it. Um, the same I mentioned before about obviously the folder not having it applied. It will just upload the file directly into BIM 360. So now the files are uploaded. We can go through the approval process. Again, I'm going to select here. You can see it's slightly different in the way it works. Submit for approval. As you can see, going through. There's no little circle here this time. I'm going to click Submit. So it'll go through the submittal. You see it's a short message. Simply hit Save. There we go. So the file's now been in shared for uh, review. So, I mean, I'll go in and just do the review process. You'll see, go in this time because it's assigned. I can go in, start a review. Now I'm not going to go and check in the drawings specifically here, but if I was happy with them, just select all the drawings, click in here, approved. So it's now going to approve all the drawings for me. Click on the submit button, hit submit. Now it'll go through the process. So it's um, going to mark the drawings as approved, but also it'll take the action to copy the files across into the other folder. As you can see, it's now done. If I just click on the link here, take me straight to that folder, you can see the files that are now displayed. And it's got all the relevant information displayed in the view. I hope you enjoyed that. Thanks very much. Don't forget to like and share the video. Also subscribe to the channel, hit that little bell so you get notifications when new videos pop up from myself and all my colleagues at Man and Machine. Thanks very much. Have a great day.